Court. The case would you give the prayer, please? I will. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, we just thank you for the, the many blessings you receive. Lord, we just thank you for life and health and the ability to assemble here in your name. Lord, we just ask that each one here receives a blessing as they do the county's business. Lord, we just ask that this business is done in a manner that you're approved of, Lord. We just ask a blessing on each and every one that attended this meeting, Lord, as they return home to grant them traveling mercies and to be with their loved ones. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, 
my cord. Thank you guys for that we come speak. Uh, I'm official capacity as administrator of election first. I just wanted to let y'all know that I'm sure you all know already, but there's a petition about the $6 million bond issue, and there's been over 1,500 names turned in already. And I think we have to Wednesday to turn that in, but uh, we're still checking on it. There, there are going to be enough. We have to have 988 to put it to a, a vote on the ballot. I don't know how y'all feel about that, but I just wanted to let you know that. Uh, 1,500 sub names is quite a few people. This whole folder's full of them. And I've received another hundred tonight as I walk in. So I don't know how many we'll end up with, but just so y'all can start deciding what you want to do. I want you to kind of know that. Mark, how do you file that? When you start? I mean, what day do y'all actually start on the petition? Do you have to file this in court? Or well, court? no, the petition starts the day, the petition process starts the day that y'all publicized that you passed the bond issue. You saw about the day that it was in the news letter? The day, it's the day it was I, in the newspaper. You started a week before that? No. I remember I. No. Because you know well, what it is. I mean, I, I do it by the law. I'm the one who brought Brett the law on how to do the process. The day when the paper was a Thursday, and that's the day that it started. <coughs> so, on the board, sir. Mr. Chairman. Um, anyway, I had a couple things. I don't know if I know all these commissioners. I don't know if they know me. Sir? Yes, please. Uh, I was county commissioner once before in this county. Uh, during that time, I served as the chairman of property and economy. I served as chairman of the highway board. I served as chairman of the airport committee. And during that time, we utilized the grant process. We wanted to move the county forward. And as chairman, I helped that process. We extended the runway. We built the tea hangers at the airport. We built new libraries down here. So I personally am not against this because I'm not for growth and I'm not for moving forward. I'm against it just because of the way the process was handled. I don't think that you can do a bond issue under other business by law. Uh, there's, anytime something comes up of this magnitude under other business, it throws up a question mark. And I know Ms. Ferguson asked y'all to vote to table that until the next meeting or bring it up after the public can hear about it. But in your uh, debt management policy, I've got one of these to pass out to everybody, because I don't know if y'all went through that or not. But it's something y'all need to read before you do the bond issue. It tells everything about bond issues and how you have to publicize it, and what makes it legal. But I would urge y'all to read that because it goes into detail about how you have to publish it. You have to let the public know what's going on. This past uh, the county uh, commission in 2011. The reason that passed in 2011 was because the state had recommended that all counties pass it, so everybody would be uniformly doing bond issues properly. It, is, it, it even addresses soft money, under the table money, and all that. It, it was to try to make everybody be above board on these projects. I'm not saying anything that anybody's doing anything but not above board. But we do need to let the public know what's going on. Yeah, I address some of that part. Uh, let me finish if you don't mind. You say whatever you want after that. But I, I just wanted to say uh, I, I've served on the County Election Commission. I served on the Tennessee Association of Election Officials as the Vice Treasurer. I served on the Legislative Committee for Election Law. And I've just got appointed to the Finance Committee for the Tennessee Association of Election Officials. There's 600 of us, and I've been voting in for that. And it's because I'll study stuff before I talk about it. You know, most people don't have time for it, and I don't have time for this, but I thought it was pretty important that we talk about some of the things that's going on. 
fact, I was at the city meeting last week. They were asked to be a part of this project. They first had a public hearing on it the week before. There wasn't that many people there. They was looking for some people from here to explain it to them. But they had been asked to fund, what, $1.5, $1.6 million for this project? But nobody even showed up to explain it to them. And they voted it down. They said they weren't interested in. Well, the main thing was because of the schools. It's taking that money that they're paying off our high school with to sign it up for another 10 years. And they said they had to double property taxes when that sales tax was allocated for the high school, and they've been waiting 22 years to get that back. So they didn't want to, they, they put this in a, I think the Park said it best, they put these projects in a want list. They said we have a want list, a need list, and a have to list. And Mr. Florence was there, he talked about how he said for the last 10 years that we're gonna have to have an elementary school. If we sign up all this money on debt service, which right now, if you look at debt service, where are we at on that? How much do we have extra right now, today? I think we're like 10 cents in arrears. No, that was last year. We're 175,000. Well, I'm, I'm just, I'm going by what you passed out to your commissioners in the last meeting. It says we're 10 cents in arrears. Yep. And it said that the city was gonna pay for half that project. We're in, the, we're in the 2020 budget year. We were probably looking at the 2019 budget year. No, I was looking at what you passed out to your commissioners on the back of that uh, proposal for this project. But I'm just saying that it shows 10 cents in arrears. I do know that our budget this year was 250 or $300,000 short. So when you start doing these kind of projects and you're already short, what's going to happen when you have all these projects finished and you have to start paying? all the utilities and you've taken them off the tax roll so the property taxes are going down. I mean, all that needs to be studied. Uh, I, I know I'm not against all these projects. Uh, I'd say the EMS building, that's a for sure go. That, that's one of them that I think everybody would be for. Because you've already got six or $800,000 in that account. And you do, do you have a grant for that one? Which one? The EMS building? Oh, yeah, 315000 so see, that was almost funded for just a few, two or three hundred thousand dollars, but it's not ready. When the, the state gave us money for central dispatch, what, seven or eight years ago, 10 years ago, it was, it was to get rid of city dispatch, <coughs> to get rid of the sheriff's dispatch, and get rid of the ambulance dispatch. This three or four hundred thousand a year we're spending on dispatch, on top of what we're spending on central dispatch. All that's gonna have to be discussed we're going to have to get everybody agreeing on that and then you have money for the project the city can lower their taxes a hundred thousand the county can lower that what they're giving the ambulance service a hundred thousand i mean there's a lot of research that needs to go in on this there's a lot of people that need to be involved and i guess the other thing is from my personal opinion i think that we should get the sheriff to be over central dispatch and i think you should put the ems building right there centrally located in town, you know, out there at the industrial park, <coughs> you know, way back in there. I don't think that's a place that you'd want central dispatch and EMS. But I'm not against all these projects. I'm just against the way that they've been proposed and against that the citizens of Bitten County didn't get to have a say-so in it before it was voted. Um, so I'd just like to urge y'all to uh, I think that y'all should probably just rescind what y'all did in other business last month and start over fresh, get people involved, get the community involved, and I don't think you'd have any problems. But as it is now, tomorrow, I'll turn the petition in to Wanda, and there, there will be enough names on it, so y'all could vote to put that on the ballot in uh, March. But what everybody I've talked to that went out and got the signatures and was pushing it, they're not necessarily against all the projects, but they want the public to be informed. And if it's put on the ballot, the people that are wanting to do the projects, they're gonna to have to inform the public to get them to vote for it because it's already got a negative connotation now. You know, you already got 1,500 people saying, I'm not for it. So 
that's whatever y'all want to do with it. Uh, I would like to address two more things if you have just another second. Uh, what I passed out on the municipal advisor, I know that they did away with Steve Bates in the last meeting, named you a municipal advisor. Are you a register with the Trades Commission? I'm not, I'm not the municipal advisor. I get to take proposals for the municipal advisor and, and choose the municipal advisor by December 31st. Well, that's, I agree with that. But you could, they, they actually voted to make you a municipal advisor. I watched the meeting, and I'm just letting you know the reason I'm passing that out is you can't be a municipal advisor. It's a conflict. I know, I know that, but uh, okay. uh, it was basically to allow me to be able to choose who the municipal advisor is and to uh, uh, basically accept proposals from outside sources who are wishing to be our municipal advisor. But you get to make that choice? They, they, they signed off their right to, to be there? Well, I'm the chief financial officer, so I've got the contractual uh, abilities to be able to accept uh, who our financial advisor would be. Uh, just Not like that them voting their rights away. Well, this I mean, I would, choose, I would choose they would probably affirm it. We would just come here and affirm it. No, I'm good with that, as long as they get a vote on it. But signing their right away to the legislative branch of government and giving it to the administrative branch is not fair. And that's not what the people elected commissioners to do. That, that's just my opinion. Did you have your, that, that's the other thing I want to talk about was the legal counsel. Who, who does he work for? Uh, I guess he works at the privilege of the county mayor on behalf of the county. You know, you have the right to hire an attorney for the mayor. This body voted down, this gentleman, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name, but they voted him down as the county attorney. And then you hired him, so he's representing you. He should be paid out of your budget. You're using legislative money for county attorney, which is misappropriation of funds to pay uh, an advisor for you. I think you have an incorrect. Uh, I think you have an incorrect interpretation of that. We brought Mr. Johnson through to this board. They voted him down as county attorney, and then we brought him back because the appointment was at my discretion. And so they basically affirmed that appointment the month later. Well, I watched it. I didn't see that, so I could be mistaken, but I saw them say that they voted him down as county attorney. And you said you had that appointment. You don't have the appointment for county attorney. They hired the county attorney. That's why they vote on it. Correct. But if they approve him to be your attorney, <laughs> that's a different thing. But that's a different line item. That's all I'm saying. That's a different line item. You can't use legislative money to pay for administrative costs. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank well, you, guys. Oh, any questions? I just want to make a comment. Just one moment. I want to go back to what I was asking Mark before. Mark, uh, you're talking about the, the people did not, was not aware of this. We've been talking about this for over a year. No, hold now, on. Let me say I'm one speaking one. right now. Did you, uh, you said but you're you not correct in that. Wait a minute. Listen to what I'm about to say. I'm speaking. We've been to these county meetings. Mm -hmm. You've not been to one of them that I recall. Listen, let me say something. No, I'm speaking. You, I'm going to give you time to come back. We've been to the counties, Big Sandy and Holly meeting. And we've been, this has been going on for over a year. Now, somewhere I didn't wake up and just, just wake up and uh, told uh, the commission's been talking about it for nearly a year here. We've been talking about the, how we're going to do the buildings. There have been negative votes on some of the counties. Party votes. The last time was a party vote. And that was 30 days prior to this of what we do it. Uh, they bought the buildings. Now that went on for nearly a, uh, six months or a year to even do that. So it's not that we kept it in the dark. Now, let's go back. Now we also dedicated what we do. I remember back about two years ago when Mr. Barnett was up here and uh, it, it passed and it was only 11 votes of 1.2 million. Where was you at during that time that you were so diligent about picking what you want to choose? I'm, I'm not diligent about that. But I'm just telling the you, only reason it's that I'm, politics listen, is coming in, in no, the No, the, the only reason I'm involved in this at all is because I'm over the election commission. So, okay. I, didn't need, I hadn't even been to a meeting. I thought election listen, commission would be bipartisan there again. I, I thought your been, job was election, not getting in the foot. I'm not over here to fuss you. Let me finish what I'm saying. They have to go through the election commission to come up with a petition. We've done petitions. We did three. Who got the petition up? Uh, uh, I believe you were going to come into office and they said you're going, you need to get to the signature or the uh, 
I mean, no. it's, it's a petition was going to come up. It was Paul Crafton that got the petition. Paul didn't come in there when I was there. But you come in there prior. He in the office, in office. With, with, my, with the mayor. He came in the right office to get a petition. Well, he may have later, but we did three you started for, it. We did three for a wheel tax. The county commission voted in a wheel tax three separate times. And all three times, there was a petition got up by the citizen. I they have you come in that day. They have a law a friend, for a reason. With an alternative. Of if you're doing things under other business and trying to slide it past the people, then there's a provision in the law. what you're saying. There's I'm a provision in the law I've been a part of to get a petition. Okay, this isn't going to work. Now, you just wait a minute. I'm chairman. I'll let you speak when you raise your hand. Listen, I'm not up here to make you mad. I know. I'm just telling you. I just don't like this slander. We try to put things together. But let me finish what I'm saying. You come in with a negative, like you're just Mr. Cool coming in here. All of a sudden, we get blowed up. I am Mr. Cool. Come to these meetings that we go to the counties. No, the reason I'm saying something about the, the money is because y'all have been talking this for a year. Thank for you. a year. Thank I you. agree with that. But you have not discussed how much it's going to cost the taxpayers until y'all voted on that bond. <coughs> on that paper, it said that it was going to be funded by the city, which was a lie. It was not funded by the city. You've not heard every word that he said about that. He said, we don't have to have the city, but if the city comes in, I understand in, that. It he said that it would be funded by the city. He didn't say it would be funded by the city. city. But you don't vote on something like that, not knowing what's happening. What did it say in the paper that this was going to be funded? How is it going to be funded in your legal description in the paper? This is going to be up to, up to, maybe it's not necessarily, it could be $1 million, it could be up to $6 million through a general yeah. obligation offer. Funded 100% entirely through ad valorem property tax. Right. I mean, that's what I heard. That's what I saw. Okay. And that's exactly what's going to back it up when you don't have the funding from the city and you don't get grants. Correct. And we're already $250,000 in the hole this year. So that means next year's budget's probably going to be two. That's 15 cent tax increase right there. And then you put this on top of it. When's the school bond going to be paid off? 2022? Correct. Uh, so how's this going to be paid before then? June 30th, 2022. You know what I'm saying? There's just so many questions. I'm just saying. I know, and I, and I appreciate you uh, bringing them. Bringing I'm not. Them I'm not against the board. I'm not against you. We've been friends our whole life. I just. I don't know how this. All of a sudden, nobody heard that. Other business. Other business is what started every bit of this. <laughs> Other business is what started every bit of this. If you'd had a public hearing a month before, and let all these people come and talk about it, and y'all got some ideas, you might have known then what was going on with the public. But y'all don't even know what's going on with the public. That's all I'm saying. Give the public a chance to say what they want to say. Now, I appreciate it. I know your concerns. I'll address them later when I get my opportunity to speak. And uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate everyone of these commissions. I've been in that seat before, and I understand how hard it is. But you are spending taxpayers' money. We need to be diligent with that. And we don't need to over-obligate ourselves doing wants when we know there's needs. To <coughs> Mr. Florence said that we're going to have to have an elementary school within the next five to six years. He also said that that would be a wonderful place to do an annex, the old elementary school, and maybe a, a well, according to civic you. center, stuff like that. You know, but if, well, if we obligate our, do y'all know how much we can obligate big County? Twelve hundred fifty dollars a citizen. We have sixteen thousand four hundred and forty-eight citizens. That's roughly twenty million dollars. So if we obligate ourselves up to that point when we get ready to do a school and we can't do it, what are we going to do? That's all I'm saying. Look at the future. Look at the long-term effects this is going to have on us. That's all I ask. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Appreciate Mark, I'm, I'm going to take oh, a I had multiple people tell me that an older gentleman came to their door and intimidated them and designed it. Mm -hmm. I saw all that stuff people, people was putting on Facebook. No, I'm not talking Listen, there's 1,500 people signed this already, 1,600. And they're but doing it out of free will. The there, there's no, yeah. There's nobody forcing anybody to sign it. There's people calling me. Oh, up to ten o'clock at night. Names. They didn't even sign it, but they signed it. Do what now? I have people forging people's names to that. Well, I don't think so. I, I, I'm going to check signatures. I check every one of them. We'll check one because I know it was forged. It probably didn't count then. It's probably got a big X beside it. Okay. I'm telling you, I've marked off 500 of them already that don't count because of different things. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Thank you guys. Hey, Mark, I have a question. Um, just for the information, I need to know. You mentioned a while ago, well, you 
you mentioned the uh, reconsider the what got passed last month. Both the things in there are the business need, need to be reconsidered personally, I think. Well, yes, and thanks for your expression on that. If it's reconsidered, does it still go on the ballot in March or does the ballot and the uh, petitions that come to the hall? I'm pretty sure that the law says that this resolution has passed, has a petition against it now, and y'all will have to put it on the ballot if the signatures are turned into the county clerk by the 20th day. Okay. Uh, y'all could rescind it tonight, though, and that would stop that action. You could come back with the same project the way it's working now. You come back up one project. I think you need to do one project at a time. And I think you need to have public hearings on all of them. Oh, sure. Um, <laughs> make sure I understand a motion to reconsider. It's not not to be on that. A motion to rescind. Okay, a motion to rescind. Thank you for the correction. <coughs> a motion for a rescind would likely result in not being on the ballot in March. It would not be on the ballot if y'all rescind it. Okay, that's 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 all. That's the only time is of essence when you're dealing with uh, petitions, uh, questions on the ballot. Yeah. Uh, I talked to the state coordinator today. That's where I've been today. We've been at a collection law seminar, and he says that if y'all y'all would probably have to have a special call meeting in December if you do want to put it on the ballot and call for it to be in March, because there's a there's a time for ninety day and hundred twenty day rule. If you don't get it voted on in December. Then you probably have to put it up till August, or have a special call election when it's going to cost ten grand. So I mean, that's just food for thought. But, but if you rescind it and y'all come back, like do the EMS building first, get some input on it, put it where it needs to go, get central dispatch working, show us what we can do. Yeah. You know, make everybody proud, do that project, and then everybody be behind you on the next one. That, that's what I think. What are we trying to do? I'll be honest with you. Each project when we involve bonds. You got the finance advisor, he's gonna get a certain percentage on every one he goes. Instead of doing it all at one time. The certain percentage is a percentage. But if I you mean when you go out and come forward to separate no. the million in one is a less track than walking and a percentage a percentage is a percentage. One point five percent on one million now and five million later or six million is exactly the same. It don't matter if you put it off and do it and break it up. Uh, I'm not against you. I, I did say that. Just, I don't know where everybody was, but he said that. But anyway, thank you. R.C. McGrady. <clears throat> I think what Mr. Ward is trying to tell you is follow the law. Nobody's above the law. Follow the law and quit throwing money around like drunk sailors. That's all I gotta say. Thank you, Mr. Gray. That moves us back, Mr. Tyler. Dwayne. Of course, I support this petition. Uh, I think as commissioners that it's your obligation for people in your district to listen to you. I gather signatures on that. Then have to pinch off the thing off the line so the whole way is now. But I let them know. Okay. But anyways, I went to approximately 40 families in my district and not a one of these, and you can cross-reference them with the signatures, knew anything about this project. Uh, you know, I don't want to be harsh, but if you're going to sit here for someone, and I know you don't make a lot of money with this, but you gotta be dedicated to this town and get up and talk to your people in your district before you think you can make decisions for them. Uh, uh, I agree with Mark, most everything Mark says, you know, break it down and do it, you know, do it in pieces. Uh, you should understand that. You've got the military bearing, don't you? And how things are done, so. Listen to you people, and uh, that's it. Thank you. Bye. That moves us on down to line item seven, commission reform. Anybody like to speak? Yes. I understand that. 
Um, another thing I'm talking about is on December 6th at First Methodist, I would love to have all the citizens around, but I would love to have all the commissioners coming there to hear the guys speak on economic development. And it's at First Methodist at 8 o'clock in the morning. It will be very informative, 8 or 9. I think it's December 6th. 6th. You said the 6th. I thought you said the 5th. No, I said the 6th. First Methodist here in Camden. That's 8 in the morning? Yes. Yes. At the 6th. That's what I got on my calendar. But it, I mean, I've listened to him about three, two times, and he is, it's very interesting, and all of us need to be there. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Hopper. <coughs> if uh, all the commissioners have looked at our minutes uh, last month, on the page of uh, 3144, In the past would have been across the front page of the Cameron Chronicle. 
you don't see anything on the front page of the Cabinet Chronicle anymore that's going to be taking place in this commission. And so I want to make a comment that I think that maybe we should talk to Mr. Richardson and find out why these things aren't being publicized so that people see it in the paper instead of just one little bitty mm -hmm. comment in the back. Thank you, Roseanne. Anybody have anything further? Nothing further. Commission, I've been asked to take a five minute break. Need a motion? Motion. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
Move to the line item number eight. <coughs> County Mayor, Attorney, Finance Advisor, Speaker. Mayor, <coughs> you'd like to speak? Do you have any questions? No. Any issues? You can know that I'll. Sure, you'd like to speak. Yes, sir. I just got a couple of things right quick. Uh, our water heaters, there's six water heaters in the jail. Two of them were replaced a little while back. They told us that they would have to uh, have to replace the others at some point. Two more of them have went down. The cost on these heaters, water heaters, is uh, seven thousand and thirty dollars each. We're going to have to replace two of them right now. And uh, we can't replace all four because he, uh, he said the others would be within a few months of going out. He told us that about a year ago. So it might have been another six months or another year. But uh, the two of them we're going to have to do right now. So that's $14,000. I want to let y'all know what's, what's going on, what we have to do. Uh, they're leaking real bad. And that's, so I want to touch base with you and kind of see what the county commission wants to do. You want to go ahead and replace them other four, or you want to just replace the two and see if the others last another six months, or that could even last a year, and then replace them. I don't know. But that's, that'll be the cost. Wait a minute, Trevor. I just want to speak to the sheriff very briefly. I'm not a water heater expert, but $7,000 for a water heater. Uh, can you explain to me the difference between it and a normal commercial water heater? This is a tankless heater is all I know about it when it was put in. Uh, if we look back on the, the uh, paper and everything that was put in, I forgot what the cost was on, but it was very high like this, and this is just a replacement cost. And I couldn't explain when I questioned why that would be that high. But that's uh, to replace the ones that we have in there now. That's the price that uh, they give us. That's United Mechanical and Electrical uh, out of Dixon. They said it would be seven thousand and thirty dollars. Is that something that you feel like the, the commission ought to ask to take the bids on? Spend that much money? We can, but those two are going to have to be replaced right, you know, right now. If we just do, uh, if we do the two, that'll be fourteen thousand. So yes, we're probably going to have to. Uh, we're going to have to at that point. I mean, we're going to have to try to vote on it, take it, take bids or whatever. I want to see what y'all want to do. Before we take the issue, you want to do all four, you want to do two. Two of them are really bad shape. Okay. Michelle. Michelle, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, I need to correct the sheriff. The $7,030 is for two, okay. not I'm one. Sorry. And uh, I'm I sorry. believe the last time we were able to obtain the money from the jail litigation tax fund for that. It does say two, and I thought it said 7000 You know what That'll be for the two, so that'll be under seven. That'll be seven thousand. That's where you got it. It says for the two. Go ahead, Matt. All right, I'm stupid on this part. What's the difference? I know waterless one or water tankless ones <coughs> cost a heck of a lot more than the regular tank ones. But I'm wondering how long has this one been there, and does it justify the cost of being so much as compared to? A Regular 50 or 100 gallon one is. Well, we're, we're talking about a tremendous amount of water. Too. Yeah, 100, 140 inmates in there, plus your employees and everything. But uh, this is, these have been in there. I believe these are original that put in when the jail was built. I believe I'm correct. Sheriff, you think there's something also required in, in a jail facility <laughs> that water? Possibly you know, it is. I don't know that. You, I know you it's know a rapid, that. it's a cheaper way to operate it's because you love water. Actual TCA requirement, I do not know. I, I don't know if it's a requirement. That's what they put in when they built it, so I presume that it, it is a requirement, but I don't know that. And I don't know which one is more efficient. What's the name of the bath? Are they leaking? About putting out hot water? I really don't know. I, they just told me the tanks were going out. I think we've got a bad leak on one of them because I know the other day we had some. It wasn't a flooding issue, but there's a retainer wall there that comes up to a couple of inches of it. We had to shut some stuff down and drain it back. Sheriff, I know the one I'm going to talk I have to do something every year to it. Like drain the water and it runs uh, vinegar, suppose it back to it. I don't know what it does to it, but it's just part of the requirement to keep it maintained. And, uh, I, I don't know anything on the water heaters, but I, 
this is the price that they give us for bidding on it to replace what we have, and that's what we put in when they built it. Uh, but I did have that wrong. I was looking right at it. It said for two of them, and I thought it said each. So that, that puts us at, at 7000 That's something y'all may want to think about because the others are not far behind it. The other issue that I need to speak on is uh, one of our commissioners, Mr. Melton, called it to our attention that uh, we wanted to check on our body armor that we have for our deputies and see if it was up to standard. And I, Mr. Melton, I appreciate you being concerned about them. I, I do make sure that we've got what they want. We checked with the company that we bought them from, and the bottom line is, I think y'all got the paper there, it, it tells you that these are uh, not substandard in any way, and for us to upgrade from what we've got, we have to be fighting, uh, and they would,
and that there's a lot of public confusion going on regarding the passage of the uh, two resolutions that we passed last uh, uh, last month. I will tell you right now that based upon the confusion and uh, I guess you would say the misinformation that has been spread, not by this body and not by this mayor, but uh, by some purposeful public uh, com commentary, and uh, but all it's done is fester a little bit of uh, misinformation within the community. So, you know, I believe we can win a public ballot. I believe uh, those public discussions that we have talked about and in informing the public in public meetings. I, 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 you know, to me, the, we have just begun the fight, and I have no problem and taking that message and articulating it to the public. However, uh, in the best interest of, uh, and an opportunity to better inform the public, to, to, I want everyone here in this county commission to feel good about your vote. We have voted on three different processes all related to this. Uh, I would recommend that this body uh, rescind uh, those last two resolutions that we passed regarding uh, the bond issuance and the terms of the bond. I just believe that uh, if you're going to have public dissent of this nature, we do have somewhat of an obligation to get out and inform the public much better than we have. Uh, but I want to address informing the public. Uh, the Camden Chronicle reports on every county commission every month. I know that since I've come into office, one of the things that we have really beefed up is our information dissemination in this county, and we Facebook Live every meeting. We hold 10 town halls annually in our community, in addition to the numerous public committee meetings that we've had. This particular project should have been to no surprise to any single person in this community. And if it was, it wasn't for our lack of trying to inform the public. I, I'm not sure that the citizens of Beaver County could be more informed of any action that we have done over the past year. We have run everything through committees as, as this bond resolution was run through the budget committee we had been prepping the, the, the commission that the bond resolution was coming. We had to wait on the last financial piece to fall into place, and that was the community development block grant, which happened to hit the very week the, the agenda was published. So we were a little late, and we apologize. However, in June of 2018, a $5 million capital improvement plan was passed unanimously by the commissioner of this county of which we placed our public trust in. We have a republic. The people of this county elect you to represent their best interests. And, and you were the most informed. I, I'm not sure how you could have been more informed. The fact that if you're not going back to your constituents enough uh, isn't the fault, I know, of the county mayor but, but also your fellow commissioners. Each one of you own that responsibility, and I think you do a good job at being able to communicate. But then, then again, we've got social media. We've got uh, the newspaper. This particular build project, as we call it, I know hit the County Chronicle probably four or five times. The meeting that I went to for the city of Camden was front page news. Okay? Now, I'm sorry I didn't make the city of Camden meeting. I didn't know about it myself. So, so the city of Camden owes some responsibility to inform the public as well, the public meeting. I understand six people showed, but I bet about 26 people showed a week later of when we told them the commission, their meeting was going to be. And it was a packed house, I would say 75 80% in support of our project. However, we, we can do better. We can use this as a learning lesson. And I do believe that it's to our best interest to rescind the resolutions, get out and educate the public, and come right back here again. I'm, I, but however, I'm committed 
to seeing that we follow through with our capital improvement plan. All the numbers, debt service, financial components of this plan was built around $5 million. We passed a $6 million general obligation bond was because we have to ensure that we can complete the project. Okay? And we still did it based upon the facts that we would get grants, that we would utilize our we would utilize our funding mechanisms wisely. We weren't going to embark on eight projects all at one time. In fact, if I think anyone I've spoken to have said, we probably won't break ground on the farmers market or civic center for another year. But you gotta have the components in place so that you can plan accordingly. Now, the city of Camden's partnership was a component that we had hoped for, but I, we did not propose this based upon the fact that the city of Camden was a needed component. They were preferred because they helped us out a million to a million and a half. Really, we just wanted a 50% commitment. We proposed to them what we felt was their best option to utilize, okay? And that was that their debt service was going to retire in two years on the schools and that they could use the same component that they already had in place, pull a quarter of that over 20 years, they could pull 50% of that over 10 years. They could come up with their own mechanism of assisting us in this project from their financial viewpoint main thing we wanted was simply a 50 50 partnership since of course a civic center farmers market is in the city of camden we felt like it was also to their best interest department and it's still not over there maybe they need a little bit of time to chew on this as well and so that's why maybe we're sending the pop the, the resolutions will act as a, as i guess you can say a benefit for all concerned but we've been talking to the city for over a year as well that this project we are going to embark on. Another thing is, we talk about the schools and the school debt and school. There ain't gonna be any schools to build in this county if the population of our student population, our student population continues to decline, if we become a retirement community and we run off uh, younger folks, uh, if we don't have young families supplying our school system with students to teach, we will not build one single school in this county. We will be closing schools down, okay? Because if there ain't nobody here to teach, there ain't gonna be any schools to build. But I do want to support the schools as best we can. I think we owe that to, they are, they are our future. But according to the wisdom that was presented to us, we should not fund a school unless we have $20 million in the bank. That's kind of the way I took it. Now, how realistic is that? It's not realistic. We borrow money as a, as a government because we are leveraging our financial act assets to our best interest. And a 20-year bond at the lowest interest rates in history is wise use of government funds, all right? Because we want to free up 150,000 or 200,000 a year so that we can buy best for the sheriff's department so that we can hire another teacher or another deputy. So funding our projects over a 20 year period of time is much more advantageous to us than going and getting a loan. But we could get a loan, we could get a 12 year loan uh, without going through the bond process. We are capable of doing that financially. I've already checked our numbers. On page 72 of our debt service in our budget, it is funded upon real money, a $2.95 tax rate. And it gets better and better and better and better every year. That is what we base the $5 million capital projects plan off of. That we had the financial capacity within our means of today of funding that project. Another aspect of this is I don't want 16,442 county mayors out there telling us how we need to build things and where we need to build it. I'm elected to do that for you. And I have solicited over a year where the best location for an emergency operations center is. And you know what they said? Do not locate it at your jail. Do not locate it where your city police is. One, one tornado wipes out the city police, 
the Sheriff's Department, and our Emergency Operations Center. Because you know why? We were just recommended to, to locate them all in one place. So the reason we have chosen the location we have is to strategically place our assets in the right place, not to service today. It's to service for next year and the next decade and the long-term vision. I am not hired to only see the first or second base. I'm elected because I'm already rounding third and heading home. I'm, I'm elected to be able to provide a little bit of vision of where we need to go <coughs> as a county and as a government. And every proposal that we made, which was at least eight of them, uh, was based upon the long-term outlook for Bigger County, not the short-term outlook. Secondly to that is, let's talk about the short-term outlook. The Steve Bates has been our financial advisor, and I know I wasn't a big fan of his at first. I mean, I didn't know Steve Bates, and I was very skeptical of the recruitment. But all I know is from 2011, our schools have been able to put $6 million in the bank. I'm sure our highway departments put money in the bank. The county has been able to base on reserves. I do believe he has served us well to <coughs> agree. But now we're basically searching for a financial advisor again which I've learned I'm the bondsman on, a, on, a, on some language now, you know, which is, of course, against the law, would never be the, the bondsman. But we do need to find a financial advisor. Stating our county attorney, if y'all remember, we, have, we did debate it in September. No one could come to a conclusion of, of Mr. Johnson being our county attorney because no one was used to, have we ever done this before? You know, Mr. Hollis was our county attorney. But the following month, if y'all remember, I brought to you the appointment. We affirmed him as our county attorney. So, I guess you can say in all, I'm for, I'm for all the public discussion that we can have. But the one thing I can't accept is no. I know we're no gets us. We just have to look around. Okay? So, so I'm all about public debate and having good meat and potatoes substance to the discussion but propose alternatives <coughs> better alternatives that takes in the long term thinking of where we want to go as a county and how we should go else the school situation takes care of itself they close down there's no students to teach um, the senior citizens are going to be taxed more and more and more and more if they are the only taxpayers in the county. <coughs> the way we keep our senior citizens from being negatively impacted in this county is to grow the young folk in this county. And if the young folk who's looking to y'all for leadership and looking to y'all for vision as well, if they don't see us acting and moving forward, then they lose hope as well and they relocate. Don't think that businesses don't do the same thing. I don't think that all businesses that could relocate the Benton County are all senior citizen visitors. I think they bring 20 year olds with families and they're looking around and what the school situation is going to be and what kind of quality of life they're going to have. It has a major impact. What Ms. Ferguson said about Mr. Bill Fruit, the Polycom coming here December 6th, I encourage every one of y'all to show up. The Benton County Industrial Board has hired him and secured his services to give us a long term <coughs> economic and industrial development strategy. I think you'll be well pleased with his what he proposes, and uh, I encourage everyone to talk about it. But again, it's all about how do you position yourself for the long term. And I, I believe we have not been doing a good job at that as a big county government. And as I've told people, this train is moving forward. And if you're not moving forward, you're getting left behind. We need to be committed to the projects that we have already voted on three times. How we do them and how we implement them, it's all up for public debate, I'm all for that. But we should not lose sight of the commitment that we have made to see them to fruition. I've spent 14 months solely trying to come out with the best plans. We've researched it, we have discussed it multiple times. I believe the proposals we put forward are very good proposals, but the process that we followed, I apologize to the citizens of Benton County. Uh, I, I apologize 
Um, if people feel like they were slighted, but I, can, I'll, I don't know what more we can do than, than Facebook Live, 10 town hall meetings, uh, 12 county commission meetings, uh, numerous reports in the county chronicle. We can all improve on things, but you cannot say that we are lacking in forming the public of this county. <coughs> Let's see. So, yeah, okay. <laughs> I've got, got one more time. And again, I do, I, but again, I, I do believe it's to the best interest, and I thank Mr. Fowler, my fellow uh, brother in arms back there. Uh, he means well. Everybody means well. Uh, but we'll, maybe we just took uh, not the wrong process, we just could have taken a better process of informing the public, and I do believe uh, we should rescind those two resolutions. Tonight. Now, lastly, because we have a distinguished gentleman in our presence tonight, Mr. Horace Bell. And knowing Mr. Horace Bell was always one of the most lively citizens in the audience, <laughs> I'm hoping that we did not disappoint you tonight with all the discussion you got to see. Because I'm sure you would have had plenty to talk about, to shake your fist about. But you know what? Uh, we all have our political adversaries. We all have our nemesis. We all have our supporters. But when it's brought in a public fashion with good intentions and all that, how can you not respect that? How can you not applaud that? And because uh, uh, we miss you, and I am very happy to have you in our midst tonight. And so, therefore, I have prepared a proclamation. And this proclamation was sponsored by Ms. Kalia Dye of the 3rd District. As we know, her mother is Ms. Uh, Debbie Dye Kyle, also a former member of this uh, body. But, but Horace Bell, you, you're special to a lot of people. And I believe that you need to be recognized. I know you're under, you've had some health concerns. Uh, our prayers are with you. Our thoughts are always with you. But in the spirit of, of having a good citizen concerned about the future of this county, we have prepared a proclamation. And I will read. Whereas Mr. Horace Bell of 6376 Point Mason Road, Big Sandy, Tennessee, is a resident of the 6th District of Benton County. And whereas Mr. Bell is a military veteran, of our county and has not only defended his country but has worked tirelessly to make this county and his local community to improve our citizens' quality of life. And whereas Mr. Bell has volunteered both at the Big County Ballpark and Big Sandy City Park by helping in the construction, mowing, and prepping of the ball fields, working concession stands, all to help provide our youth with better recreational activities. Mr. Bell has volunteered in the past at the Big County Animal Shelter and is very active and volunteers to help with all the activities at the Big Sandy Senior Citizen Center and the VFW of Big Sandy. And whereas Mr. Bell has always been an active participant and attendee at Benton County government meetings and events and expressed his concerns and ideas to officials, all in a good faith effort to improve our county and our communities. And whereas in, the, in a past effort to benefit Benton County citizens, Mr. Bell personally contacted trucking companies that cut and hauled pulpwood out of Benton County and notified them that we had a pulpwood tax in place and thereby assisted in the collection of $4,000 in one month, which was equivalent to the total that had been collected annually. And now, therefore, I, Brett Lashley, Mayor of Benton County, on behalf of the entire county commission and our citizens, do hereby proclaim this proclamation honoring Mr. Horace Bell for his dedication to the Benton County citizens and respectfully submitted and approved on this 18th day of November. And knowing that you're probably the only one who has collected taxes on the pulpwood, we also have a job for you if you want to uh, be our pulpwood tax. <laughs> but I want this entered for the record for the Benton County minutes. Do you have a copy, Wanda? Uh, because it's that important to me that this particular individual of Benton County be recognized, be secured in the minutes of this county, will forever live in the history 
of Bibb County, and I applaud you for all your work. <laughs> Obviously, we have part of the public that feels like it wasn't a transparent process, 
totally fine. I'm standing on the commitment that we're doing the right thing as far as the capital improvement <coughs> projects, okay? But how we fund them is a different process, and that could have been a better process. So, so if we rescind it tonight, we do not have to go through the public referendum and try to win the battle within the public or not. And that's probably the best thing to do. The public does deserve some more discussion. However, to put it back to the public, because we have a lot sitting in the public, uh, you know, you owe some responsibility too to be a participant in that process, to be here at public meetings, to be at committee meetings, to be at town halls, whatever it may be. And, uh, you know, again, I look forward to some very positive debate and discussions and ideas that's going to come from this. So, hey, if it, if it improves the county, none of these have to be overnight, but last thing I didn't mention, the senior citizen's basement does not get fixed, okay, by ignoring this process. We do not position, we, we're still living out of 1958, 1968 buildings that are not equipped to do government services. I believe we still need a courthouse annex to operate our business and to make our judicial processes, the parking, the retail around the court square, I believe all that process could be improved. Those processes and those needs are still there. That's why I said I do believe that the intent of the capital improvement plan is just and to the overall best benefit of the county. But we can do better in the transparent process. And so I'm recommending retraction and rescinding of those two resolutions. <coughs> Let's move on with county business. I mean, I, one more question. What about our grants? What's this going to do to our grants? Well, one grant we cannot back down from. Okay, and that is the community development block grant that is related to the emergency management agency and EOC, the E911 building. And I probably will come back with an alternative proposal simply for that project. Okay, so so the resolution will change, the bond will change, but I do believe a bond is still the best way to go. It gives us a 20 year option. USDA will give us a 40 year bond, but. But either way, I do strongly believe, and that's my responsibility to come to the public and tell them that that is the best process. But the EMA bill and the EOC is very vital to getting started. It's, we've got uh, basically two years from the awarding of the block grant to have that done. But as long as it's still out, we can't get another block grant. So that's why it's important to move that project forward, extract it from the others, and then we'll... we'll Again, I, I look forward to all the public discussion and debate that we can have. I need a motion. I'd like to make a motion to rescind. I have a motion for Agent Hearn. Resolution 15 and 16 or? 16 and 17. 16 and 17. Resolution 16. 16 and 17. I have a first <laughs> secretary. Secretary. I'm glad about Ms. Jane. She's going to meet you to it. Is it no second? All in favor? Chairman. Ms. Jane. The mayor has asked us for a motion to rescind. Mark Ward has asked us for a motion to rescind. Should this rescind pass, that means the petition is going to go away. It's not going to be on the ballot. Resolution 16 to 17 is going to go away. The election's in March, right around the corner. I'm going to go against the mayor. I'm going to go against Mark Ward. My vote is going to be against this motion to rescind because I want this on the ballot in March. I want the heart of the citizens. I want to know how these citizens feel about this subject we're having right now. Let the record, let the record reflect. I want to vote. I give the vote. Any further discussion? If not, to rescind, we will roll call. You vote on your rescind. <coughs> Michelle Hill. Yes. Jenny Hickman. Yes. Roseanne Ward. Yes. Daryl Hicks. No. Ronnie Hopper. No. Mary Powers. No. Angie Hearn. Yes. Don Patton. Yes. Daniel Ferguson. No. Kenneth Miller. Yes. Rocky Preston? No. Felia Dye? Yes. Norman Frazier? Yes. Gary Fire? Yes. Bill Melton? Yes. 
Doug Bakers? No. Ward Plant? Yes. You know, we should change your vote. Being 
the total amount budgeted of only $150. Is that correct? Yes, the sex offender registry fee so has to go back to sex offender registry. <coughs> the 31725 go back into the budget. I'd like to make the motion to amend it. Motion. We're going to do a motion to amend. Right, I understand. We're going to do 150. So he's taking off the 317. Okay, that's what I needed to clarify. And you make a motion. Any discussion? Any further? All in favor? Aye. Aye. No, no. <coughs> now we're going to vote on it with the amendment. Motion. Motion by Dana. Second. Second by Penny. Any discussion from the public? Not all in favor say aye. 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 I'll carry it on no. Item <coughs> number 15. Resolution to budget the funds in the amount of $25,001.06 within the school budget. Motion. Motion by Dana. Second. Second by Angie. Discussion? Are we just moving this money around? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Chair? Yes, sir. I'd like to hear from Mr. Florence what this is. Mr. Florence. <coughs> He's about to speak. He's about to speak. He's not worried where I recognize it, sir. Okay. Um, that is it the twenty five thousand? Yes. That, that's an insurance claim on the gym floor at the high school. So that's just insurance money that was given for damages. Right. We got it. You're moving it back around. Yeah. Right. Correct. New money coming in from the insurance just to put it in the building. Thank you. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 I hear no. Line item 16. Resolution to appropriate funds in the amount of 65000 from the unassigned fund balance <coughs> and the school fund in budgeting within the appropriate expenditure account within Motion. the school budget. Motion. <coughs> Motion. Dana. Second by her. Second by her. Discussion. This was for the career and tech building. For the what? Career and tech building. Uh, Go ahead, this this had nothing to do with the train uh, improvements, right? This is just a separate eating pool. That we have questions on what? Mark, you'd like to address that, please. Uh, this is one way up. Um, the air conditioner units on the Senator Frank P. Lashley Career and Technical Center are almost 30 years old, so. Um, it's not part of the train project, but with the U.S. communities, we can buy the units at cost, and so we're then we'll be able to have those installed, and we plan to have that done over Christmas break. So you're talking about five um, additional units on the um, Career Technical Center. Not to get off track, but uh, the the installation of the train, the train project, mm -hmm. are you already seeing savings in that? I, the first electric bill was 20000 and that we don't even have the HVAC hooked up. That was just the lighting, so yes. That's great. Anything further in discussion? If not, so it's one of the new roll call. Where is the money coming out of? Okay. That's fund balance. That's the school's fund balance. Roll okay. right. no call. Rochelle Hill? Yes. Janet Peekton? Yes. Roseanne Ward? Yes. Daryl Hanks? Yes. Ronnie Hopper? Yes. Mary Powers? Yes. Angie Hearn? Yes. Don Patton? Yes. Diana Ferguson? Yes. Kenneth Miller? Yes. Rocky Preston? Yes. Alaya Dye? Yes. Norman Frazier? Yes. Gary Farr? Yes. Phil Melton? Yes. Doug Beakers? Yes. Ward Plan? Yes. You know, we should change your vote. <coughs> Motion carries. Item 17, resolution of appropriate funds in the amount of 110000 from the unassigned fund balance in the school fund and budgeting within the appropriate expenditure account within the school budget. Motion. Motion by Dana. Second. Second by Kenny. Discussion? Right here. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. 
Mark, my question will be for you. There we go. Um, you mentioned in budget that this project was for the teachers and daycare, and you described the property that you were wanting to buy. And I'm for that. I'm not here to debate you or argue on this. Um, it didn't come up under budget. Is that because it's a new idea, or can yeah. you? Well, it, the property become, the the property just was um, put up in real estate, and the the property we're talking about is across from the First Baptist Church and the property that the school owns on Briarwood Avenue. I think it's one twenty Briarwood Avenue. Uh, Rusty Fuller's the owner, and um, of course, even if it was, if the the daycare is a thing that we're looking at, several districts do that. That would be something that would be a wonderful asset to our um, employees. But even if we didn't do that, you know, that property there of attaching to school property would be well worth the investment. Um, my question to you, would you have any objections? The actual resolution, all it says is for, some, for certain subsidiary, and that's a hard word for me to say, items. Did you have any objections to us amending this resolution and that that $110,000 we're talking about is only to be used in the, to buy uh, a daycare for the teachers? Well, it's not the daycare that we're buying, it's the property. Well, the property is to be used as a daycare for the teachers. I can't speak for the board. I, I mean, that is the idea. And obviously, that's something we're going to discuss yeah. this spring when we're talking about budget. Because if we do open a daycare, but that's uh, additional expenses. You know, it's the property that come available. If you if you look on the property website, you know, the purchase price is, I think, $14,000 less than it sold last time. So the school just, if you go through, before I started, when Mr. Robertson was here, any time property opens up around the school, we, we do our best to purchase it if we feel like it can benefit um, our county in the future. Well, without an argument, can I just kind of tell you where I'm coming from sure. and how I feel sure. about it? This money, $110,000, is to be pulled from the uh, school's savings account, their funds. And uh, it's estimated by our former financial advisor about $3.7 million. The, um, that money is going into the capital outlay account. If we don't designate that money for a certain subject, then that money can be spent on anything. Right now, you've, we've got $380,000 total for this year's budget and capital outlay, most of that going into building improvements. Um, to, uh, the directors want to put that in building purchases. I'm going to ask for a motion, and if it doesn't get seconded, it'll just die here on the floor. I want this money, and I want the resolution to read, it is specifically and only for the purpose of a school teacher daycare. And Mark, if you can word that better for me, please have for anybody in the audience. But that's what the <coughs> is. my recommendation would be not to approve the resolution. Because I don't see how you can put that on the school board that we're gonna open a daycare when that's our thoughts. But that that's a whole different issue. And plus, I don't think you have the authority to tell us once it's in that line item how to spend it. Now, obviously, we're going to work with you to do what we can. But if we if we get into the start talking about line items, but this, this was um, this property become available last month, and um, the school board authorized me to make an offer. We made an offer; um, they've accepted. But obviously, we didn't have that money in the budget, so. The bottom line here is, as far as the commission goes, is are, will you approve moving the money to purchase the property? Um, the, the purchase price was ten was $100,000, and we just put a little extra in there for additional, if we don't spend it, it's gonna go back to fund balance anyway. I, I think you can look at the audits over the years, we're not um, just spending it to spend it, but we thought it would be safe to, to move a little extra. Um, and I can tell you, if property comes open, close to school again, I'll be up here next month if the board approves it, and, it, and it's a good investment, because um, uh, it's a lot better in property than it is sitting in fund balance. So, but that's strictly, the resolution is strictly up to you as a governing body, whether, um, you know, you let the court move it. If not, then if the owner hold on to it, we can put it in the budget next year, and we can get an approved budget. But I, I, I don't, I, I would not, 
uh, the school board has to decide whether we open a daycare. That's something that several districts do. Um, I know where Mr. Lashley, uh, Mayor Lashley, when he's in Dixon, they have one. It is, it, it's a great asset to their um, school. <coughs> Paris City has one. Um, we, the teachers are the ones that come to us about it when, it, when it's opened up. But, but, but to say we're going to, I just think that's something that, that's up to the school board, not to me as director. And makes your job easier attracting teachers. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. It's agree? a recruitment tool, I mean, let's be honest. Do you agree with me, uh, Mr. Mr. Mark, that if it's not designated, then you can spend, you and the school board can spend that money on anything you want to? Well, it, it would have to be on property. Okay. Yes. I'm going to withdraw. Okay. You've changed my mind. Okay. I'm going to withdraw my motion, but I am going to say this. In the next budget year, if I'm still on the budget committee, I want more specifics on how the money that falls under capital outlay is going to be spent. Now, I know you can't predict a tornado or a roof falling off or something, but if you've got $250,000 in building improvements, I want some details. And that being said, I'm going to stop. Anything further in discussion? <coughs> if not, Michelle Hill? Yes. Janet Hinkin? Yes. Roseanne Ward? Yes. Daryl Hicks? Yes. Ronnie Hopper? Yes. Mary Powers? Yes. Angie Hearn? Yes. Don Patton? Yes. Dana Ferguson? Yes. Kenneth Miller? Yes. Rocky Preston? Yes. Clea Dye? Yes. Norman Frazier? Yes. Gary Ferg? Yes. Bill Melton? Yes. <coughs> Doug Vickers? Yes. Ward Plant? Yes. Anyone wish to change your vote? I would just like to make a statement. I am a teacher, but without conflict to this resolution. Anyone else? Motion carries. Line item 18. Resolution appropriating funds from the county clerk reserve account in the amount of $660 in budget within the appropriate expenditure account within the county clerk budget. Motion. motion. I have a motion by Bill. Failed. I'll second. Dana, you second. Sir. I thought you raised your hand for that. Yeah, but this is new money. It's new money. <laughs> Any discussion? No discussion. It was approved. It was approved. My budget. Need a roll call. Michelle Hill? Yes. Janet Hinkin? Yes. Roseanne Ward? Yes. Daryl Hicks? Yes. Tom Hopper? Yes. Mary Powell? <coughs> yes. Angie Hearn? Yes. Don Patton? Yes. Dana Ferguson? Yes. Kenneth Miller? Yes. Rocky Press? Yes. Leah Dye? Yes. Lauren Frazier? Yes. Gary Spurr? Yes. Bill Melton? Yes. Doug Vickers? Yes. Ward Plant? Yes. You know, we should change your vote. Motion carries. Motion carries. Line out of 19, resolution to both transfer and appropriate funds in the total amount of $31,784.85 within the fund 171 capital project in order to purchase the sheriff's patrol car from the last fiscal year. Motion by Angie. Second, Second by Taylor. Any discussion? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, this money is for sheriff's cars for the next year. Yes, sir. Or the ones we just bought. We actually had money put in the budget last year, and the sheriff didn't order to patrol cars until February <coughs> and April. So our fiscal year ends June thirtieth. He would, did not receive those cars until August and October, so late September. So that money that was in the budget for those people <coughs> reverted back to our unassigned fund balance. So now we are we're having to reappropriate to pay for those cars. Just like this one, we like to share. Yes. <coughs> and it is new money. It is new money. Anything further discussion? If not, this one we have real call, please. Michelle Hill? Yes. Janet Hayden? Yes. Roseanne Ward? Yes. Daryl Hicks? Yes. Ronnie Hopper? Yes. 
Terry Powers? Yes. Angie Hearn? Yes. John Patton? Yes. Dana Ferguson? Yes. Kenneth Miller? Yes. Rocky Preston? Yes. Leah Dye? Yes. Norman Frazier? Yes. Gary Fires? Yes. Bill Melton? Yes. Doug Vickers? Yes. Or Plant? Yes. You know, we should change your vote. Motion carried. Out of the 20, on the notary, I have Miss Rochelle Hill. Only one to be done. This motion, motion by Jenny. Second. Second by Angie. Any discussion? If not, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Aye, no no's. I carry. Not out of 21. Any other business? Yes, Mr. Rochelle. Um, I don't think I can make a motion for this because I work at the sheriff's office, but I would like to ask for a commissioner to make a motion and a second to appropriate $7,030 from the jail litigation tax fund so that the sheriff can get these water heaters replaced. Um, they're in pretty bad shape. That will have to be done by resolution. You cannot do an appropriation oh, for a motion. So have to be next I apologize. Yep. Mr. Hicks, um, a couple of meetings ago, I, I brought up that the, the jail employees didn't receive the 10% that we voted on. And tonight, Kenny said he had a little explanation on that. I, I'd appreciate if y'all give him a minute to see what he's got to say. I wasn't in the, in the budget meeting meeting when this was discussed, but we still brought our numbers back up here and presented the budget. I think we see what the difference was made in the numbers or something. And I'd like for y'all to look at that at some point and see if we can come up with the 10% and figure out exactly what it should be to come out of the actual what what was it, Michelle? Eight eight and a half on one. No, sir, it was uh eight percent for the jail and seven percent for the uh
to do so. Of course, as time goes on, right now our debt capacity easily would probably be $4 million. That's based upon not one, $1 more than the projected 2020 budget. <coughs> but it gets a lot better than that. You know, it goes from 171000 to 181000 to 225000 to 300000 And in six years, it's going to be up to $455,000. And people talk about the, the budget not balancing, but the budget is based upon recurring revenues that come in. We get a lot of one-time revenues. So our balance usually comes, our budget normally will come in over in the black, not in the red. Well, we, that's enough time to finish the projects anyway. I, I would think that you could do the building thing within six months. I, would think. I think it would take longer than that. <clears throat> All right, a year. It still gives plenty of time. It's, it's, it, again, it's, it's talk that, you know, uh, we need to determine what the best course of action is, but if you believe August is the best time for an election, then we don't have to have a special call meeting. We just come in December or January and pass pass that resolution at that time. I just know that we cannot have it on the Super Tuesday, you know, uh, ballot <coughs> if we are not somewhat timely in our efforts. That being said, motion. Go ahead, Dick. Motion is adjourned. Motion. Second. Second by the table. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion made all night.